So not sure whether this tenant was handled with any kind of tenant um, worker information, but if it is not, we'll see after you create the report, what kind of process that you need to review to manage tenant data. So I said, <clears throat> similar to the matrix, you have trending uh, report actually. So which, where you need to take the trended source actually. Or if you wanted to go with advance, but you wanted to have the trended data, you can look for trended sources. And this is going to be a kind of business object we'll use even when you actually create trended trending report also. So when you go with trending, the same options, what you have a matrix will be coming. Okay, grouping, column grouping, group grouping, drill down and uh, detailed data fields, you'll be getting same what you see in matrix. Only thing is your source will be different in matrix and trended. Uh, in trended, you'll be using only one kind of source, which is trended. In matrix, you can go with any other uh, business object or source in order to get accurate data. Okay, similarly now I'm creating advanced with standard worker information. I'll try to know the feature heights, feature terminations for um, getting in the organization. We'll try to find that information. Feature heights in the sense, anything feature from today, right? If employee is getting terminated today, is getting current data. But other than today, like tomorrow, day after tomorrow, anything before, anything after today it is a kind of future termination we can consider, right? So we'll try to see how we can get that information. And normally, normal business object worker will not, uh, you know, give you a kind of information of future terminations. You need to actually uh, go with the business process transactions in order to know all the future terminations or future any kind of action events that are happening with the employee. But your trended data source will be the kind of trended um, thing, right? Which will be looking for trends happening within workday. So it will give um, even future terminations also. But the way that you deal with the report, it can give the feature um, the highest feature terminations also. It will give. Since you have selected um, advanced, you got a chance to actually make your report as a web service. I'm not able to select anything. Okay. So you have taken trended uh, worker information and where you wanted to view the termination, um, uh, <clears throat> termination data, like let's say future termination. Okay, we'll see how to handle this one. As I said, trended worker is a kind of unique uh, business subject that holds different um, data. So when you take worker, it will not look for worker business object. So all the worker information will be coming from trended workers.
so you need to know when someone asks you to actually get a trends of um, termination trends of um, hiring so when you get um, such kind of requirements forget about the format at least source you need to know which is which should be your trended source then the format and all probably you can think which report type will work based on your needs and all whether it can be uh, trended workers or advanced you can actually take that one Okay. Uh, let's filter the data since we wanted to have feature date, feature terminations, right? So it should be it should be after today's date, which it should be after today, which are nothing but a kind of uh, terminations. So you can have you will have two options. You know when you wanted to filter the data, whether you wanted to have um, activity or snapshot. Snapshot is nothing but uh, which gives uh, you know information right from um, the effective date of the termination. Okay, and if you are taking as an activity, <clears throat> which is nothing but you know uh, will be uh, nothing based on. Um, current date it will look for uh, you know even beyond that particular date okay so snapshot is something different and activity is something different when you go with snapshot which actually looks for complete information of termination okay without um, you know your current your past your future it will give complete information of uh, snapshot and activity is nothing but we are now looking for feature terminations activity okay so which is nothing but we are looking for certain kind of scenarios to get all the feature feature information so instead of snapshot actually getting all the information from the snapshot i wanted to get all information from activity okay that probably you need to let you know when you are creating um, any kind of trended information and <clears throat> so termination is something uh, a kind of transaction and whatever right? whenever you perform 
whenever you terminate an employee or whenever business process called termination triggers in workday your termination event executes and the employee will get terminated similarly whenever you wanted to hire an employee hire business process has to execute and then the employee will get hired similarly when you wanted to promote an employee from one position to another position a business process transaction called a job change will be triggering and promotion will happen so for any kind of transaction that needs to happen in workday business process plays an important role in running in the background and making the transaction to get complete and now since we are talking something about termination whenever termination has to trigger in workday business process called termination has to run in the background without that business process running employee will not get terminated in workday system okay if a business process is running properly and if it got corrupts and stops uh, you know running and in the background uh, whenever um, any termination has to happen and your business process is not supporting to terminate there will be there will be no terminations happening in the system so remember that when you're trying to get um, some information on terminations it is nothing but you're trying to get all this information from termination business process okay so another way that you can actually filter here is business process type So what should be your business process here? What should be your business process? Termination should be your business Termination. process. Yeah. And who will get termination? who will be getting terminated anyone can get terminated right contractor can can get terminated employee can get terminated anyone can get terminated right <clears throat> anyone who is who will be getting terminated has to undergo uh, through termination business process but most of the organizations what they'll do is um, contractors you know they'll be not tracking okay they'll be not tracking um, they'll not go with they'll not maintain any kind of standard business process for hiring a contractor or for hiring uh, for terminating contractors they'll just uh, give um, you know uh, create a profile and give a start date of that contractor without any kind of a normal business process will be because when employees are going with um, getting hired under a specific business process called hiring all the you know things has to happen um, the benefit elections has to be configured benefit elections has to be provided and um, any kind of bonus amount there one time bonus has to be given all these things you know employee will be getting and that's the reason why the higher business process is configured with all these steps like uh, assigning any kind of one time bonus if it's eligible and uh, creating um, any kind of uh, you know benefit plan based on the higher date all these things you know will be happening through benefit thing so through business process but for contractor all these things you know will not be applicable right uh, so they will be going outside of that business process and create manually the contractor um, profile actually and similarly when you wanted to get um, you know termination information you need to know it has to be in 99.9 case the percent cases you will be dealing with employee termination only okay because you wanted to actually know the termination information of an employee but contractor you can get <clears throat> but in most of the scenarios most of the customers will not be maintaining any kind of standard business process for contractors whenever the 
I wanted to a contract ends, they'll just uh, expire that um, the workday account and um, you know make that employee to leave, but they'll not uh, terminate contractors with the business process transaction. So, so whenever you are dealing with any kind of hiring or termination with trended, so make sure that you are doing for employee only. So we'll take worker type as employee. What should be your worker type? Should be employee because for contractors will not be looking for any kind of um, you know, business process transactions and determinations. But in case uh, you know, it's just a kind of um, you know, observation from my this thing from my experience, but in most of the customers who actually wanted to go with proper format of uh, hiring beat contractor beat uh, full time employee you know if they wanted to go with standard business process that should be okay you know then in that case you can go with uh, your uh, you know um, whenever you're dealing with hiring or terminations you can go you can include even contractors in your criteria if there is a kind of data that you feel it is there but if in most of the cases they will not consider contractor as a kind of, uh, you know, whatever features that will be given for employee will not be considering contractor to avail those things. So record date is nothing but when termination activity has got recorded. Okay. So we have taken <clears throat> activity of termination business process type should be a kind of termination and worker type should be employee and record date which is nothing but when termination has got recorded okay that should be not today but greater than today When you, want, you don't want to go with the standard dates, but all time, all all the times in our report has to dynamically dynamically pick after today. So you have delivered fields called um, today, where you can get from uh, another field of your report filter. That's how you know your report will be working as needed. Amit, can we have like record date um, as a prompt like, where we can give the date? Yeah, anything. Anything Effective. you can do. Yeah. Anything you can do. So, so now I'm asking, like, can we do in this report so we can also refresh that? So there are some kind of um, default prompts, you know, that you'll be getting for this one. There are default prompts that is there with the source. You'll be actually getting with this record type. You got record type. So this needs to be actually utilized for prompting your data. Okay, time series date from when to when you want it to have. Will be specifying. So let's go with sequence start date and end date. And contingent worker type, we don't want it to have, so we'll not be looking for contingent. And employee type, since we are already filtering um, with the um, employee type as a 
you know, uh, here again, an employee type is different, whether it is a regular or, uh, you know, any kind of fixed term, any kind of uh, those kind of employee types, you know, you'll be giving. And record type, we have already given um, activity and worker type. <clears throat> so you'll be give, worker type also we have given and active remove headcount remove exclude from headcount okay so you know when you actually check this checkbox uh, so the name itself is saying like remove exclude from headcount okay if whatever um, you know your uh, uh, headcount reports are there this should not be, um, you know, this checkbox, you know, it's a kind of Boolean value. This actually exclude from the headcount, uh, you know, what you typically have when you're dealing with headcount reports with trended. So this kind of uh, field, you know, will allow to actually exclude from that headcount. Okay. So it's a kind of a Boolean value. You need to check whether you want it to actually exclude or include in the headcount reports. Active. This is also a kind of Boolean value and worker type. So since we already given, oh my God. But everything has gone, I believe. Let me see. This should be the report, right? But not sure all the fields will be there or not because we have not saved it, right? Yeah, all the fields has gone. Okay. No. Let me quickly add um, the fields that we wanted to have. Quickly add the fields that we've created.
what would be the business process type termination should be the business process type so that your report will not take time in actually looking for all the business process transactions other than termination So you want this to have a kind of prompt, right? So if we can record it as prompt and Coming to the prompts. So we start date and end date, which would be a kind of a different value. Condition workers, we don't want it to use. So we'll be specifying do not prompt at one time. And employee type, since we already taken. <clears throat> as an employee will not be or employee type is a kind of let's see options what it gives and take full time or regular kind of thing and record type which we already taken as an active Let's make it as do not prompt and worker type as con employee, which we have taken mark as prompt. And yeah, so we'll be going with start date, end date with employee type as fixed. Since you already give, given the regular, if you don't want this also to be prompted in the output, you can give this as also do not prompt. And there is one more prompt that we have given from the filter on record date. Okay. Record date, which comes from your report, we'll give last. No default value, you can just keep it as it is so that you can take care when you're running a report. Now, let's see if you're Oh, I read it two times we had. The field data source filter is required. Okay. Okay. So time series start date. Let's take. I don't know. This is not live tenant, right? Not sure whether what data that it has. But let's take from eighth to fifteenth, and record date should be from today. Exclude not sure whether data will be there or not. Yeah, something data will not be there because this is not a live tenant, right? So future termination somehow will not be processed. Let me go back. Start it. Mm 
Yeah. So when you, when we go back, we are getting a back date determinations. But future also you'll be getting since you know this is not a live tenant, right? Uh, so where all the future dated uh, HR transactions are performed, we are getting a blank. But yeah, based on this, uh, you should be able to go back and get accurate data. And also based on the date range that you wanted to have, let's say here I've taken something <clears throat> till today I've taken, okay. So till today with the snapshot date, there was an activity and um, record date of termination it has got me two terminated records okay so which you can actually uh take it as a kind of um, a trended um kind of trended information between the date range of terminated employees similarly you can play around with any of the information with tender okay if you wanted to know the any kind of um, change business process transactions happened uh, let's say promotion or job change anything that you wanted to know only thing is that you need to do is in the filter i've given a business process type as terminations so just remove the termination and it will look for all the business process transactions in workday not only termination but when you remove that filter it will look for only uh, when you remove that filter, it will look for all the transactions. But when you actually filter with terminations, you only look for terminated one. Okay. Understood the trended one? It's simple, but only thing is you need to know how trended works versus a tra standard um, you know, data. That's the only thing that you need to know. Other than that, um, as how you actually deal with um, worker related sources and objects, you'll be managing the same way with your filters of, uh, you know, uh, trended workers. Anything unclear, anything that you wanted to check or clarify here? And it would be since, you know, it is not a regular uh, worker right probably you'd be having some kind of questions <clears throat> managing trended if there is anything unclear you can check um i would like to do this by myself and if i can i'll ask questions in the next round yeah so because when i'll do it i'll understand what i didn't understand as well yeah one more thing you know that i wanted to show with when you're managing trended information Okay, I think I didn't proxy as logon, right? That's the reason why I'm not getting few options. Let me proxy as a logon and show some of the options that you can handle during trended um, reporting. We see here, maintain trended workers and maintain trended workers organization is there, right? Whenever, uh, you know, you're actually creating the first trended um, uh, report, when there is no kind of uh, trended data, you know, that sits in your tenant. And um, this is the activity that you need to perform. Refresh your uh, maintain trended workers source so that if there is any kind of updated worker that has to come into trended worker source, when you refresh, you'll be getting all the updated information. Okay. So when you when your report is not pulling any data, when you manage any kind of trended reporting related stuff, 
So just come to maintain internet workers uh, task and here just click on refresh. It will refresh the data and um, will actually pull um, all the records you'll be getting. So far we have 10 records processed <clears throat> around, um, no, this is the head container that we have so far till date. But yeah, if there is anything uh, that you wanted to include a few more um, employees um, that has to be a part of 100 who might have got tied, who might have got terminated, who might have got you know any kind of transactions happening in Workday, you can just refresh this one and it will execute and refresh your source to get the data. So maintain trended workers just to keep in your mind which actually uh, behind the screens, it runs and um, groups all the tenured workers into one source. So which will be actually managing tenured things. Okay, so there's one thing you need to remove, you need to remember while working with tenured reports. Okay. And the one that we have created, right? Uh, advanced report is a straightforward one. We just took very basic fields and um, try to you know see if we can get uh, future terminations which we are not because since you know this is not live tenant you'll obviously see no one making such kind of transactions but we were able to go back and find um, the you know previous terminations in our report that should actually give um, some kind of examples but yeah so you can actually manage with any kind of same report what i've created just change the transact change the business process type from termination to change job, from the termination to hire. Okay, so so that you'll be getting that relevant data when you run a report. Just try with that option, and also, <clears throat> now we have taken advanced report, and there's a reason why you know we were getting all the things in a tabular format. But in case if you wanted to have a kind of uh, trended information to be populated in a graphical format, then you need to choose your um, report type as trended instead of advanced so that you will be getting uh, option to actually choose the chart in a way that you wanted to populate the data and get it. <clears throat>